Hi, I'm Steve Halliday, and in this video I'm going to show you how to take the pieces from the previous videos and incorporate them using software into one complete finished autonomous vehicle. The software that I've built for this autonomous vehicle gets the car to try to drive between two lines on the floor. This is one application, and it's certainly not the only application that you can build, but it illustrates how to use the sensors and the motors together to try and come up with an application. Let's take a look at the software. As you may recall, this program works by trying to drive the car forward until it runs into a white line. And once it finds a white line, then it backs up, turns left, and tries to find the line again, and then turns right and tries to find the line again, and decides which way allows it to travel further, and then it backs up and goes in that direction. So let's walk through the code and see how it works. You'll notice up here the first thing I've done is I've included those two files that we've shown in the previous videos and then I've defined a bunch of constants that I'll use throughout my program. The reason you define constants using the preprocessor using these pound defined statements is that I can use them throughout my program and I, if I need to change them I can change them in one place and so that's kind of a nice feature. And then we see down here that I've create an instance of the motor shield class and a couple of motors, one for my steering, one for my drives again. So now here's the setup method that we've seen before and it looks pretty similar to what we've seen so far. I initialize the motor shield class and then I set the speed for my drive motor and for my steering motors. I'm going to run my drive motor at, at 150 out of the 255 just because if I get it running too fast and I see a white line then it's hard to stop in time to to be able to react to the line. And then the last thing that I do in my setup is I start moving the car forward. Now let's look at the loop method and see how this works. You'll recall from the setup method the last thing I do is move forward and so when I hit the loop method I'm moving forward the first time I hit it at least and I check to see if there's a white line that I see. If I don't see a white line, then I skip over all of this and I just continue back to the top of the loop again and I'll continue to do that until I see the white line. Once I see the white line, I fall inside this if and the first thing I'll do is stop the car and then I'm going to try backing up and going left and try backing up and going right and see which one goes further. What these methods return here is the number of milliseconds that it takes to do this maneuver. And so if the left took longer than the right, that says I can actually move further if I turn left. So what I'll do at that point is I'll turn my wheels left, or if the right took longer, then I'll turn my wheels right, and I'll move back for some amount of time, and then I'll straighten the wheels out, and I'll start moving forward again, just like I did when I left the setup method. And so by doing this over and over again, eventually I find my way around the curves. Let's take a look at some of these other methods. You'll recall here, I try left and try right. And you can see those methods down here. What I do is I turn the wheels left and I do this complete backup. Or if I'm trying right, I turn the wheels right and I do the complete backup. I factored out the common code from both of these into a separate method called complete backup. This is kind of the key to the whole system. The way this works is, I call this millisecond method here. What this returns is the current time in terms of a counter of milliseconds. So it's my start time. I keep moving backwards while I'm on the white line. Once I've cleared the white line, I get out of this little while loop here. I'll delay for some backup time to allow me to move back behind the line. I'll straighten out my wheels, and then I'll move forward. And I'll do that until I hit the white line again. Once I see the white line, then I stop and I figure out what time it is at that point, and I subtract the current time from the initial time to give me the delta in the time, the amount of time that's transpired as I've gone through this method, and that's what I return from this method. I also have another method in here, get distance, which I'm not using in this program, but this would be how I would read the proximity sensor. Here's the isWhite method that determines if I'm sitting over a white line. I read the analog pin for the light detector, and if it's less than some threshold, then I determine that I am on a white line. Here's how the steering works. Go left to turn the wheels left, or go right to turn the wheels right, and go straight, which makes the wheels just point straight ahead. And then finally, I've got these mechanisms here that allow me to move forward or backward. 
you'll notice I run the drivetrain forward and I want to keep track of my current state. Up here I've defined a variable called drive state. Initially I'm in the stop direction, but when I call move forward then it sets it in forward direction. And when I call move backward it sets it to the backward direction. Why do I care about this drive state? Well, when I go to stop, if I just release the motor, it takes a while because the car will coast to a stop. So what I do instead is if I'm moving forward when I go to stop, then I make the motor move backwards for a little bit of time, for half a second, and that causes the car to come to a stop much more quickly. Or if I'm moving backwards, I do the opposite and, and make the car go forwards or make the motor go forwards to bring it to a stop more quickly. And so this move stop method does just that. If I'm moving forward, then run the motor backwards for a small amount of time. Otherwise, if the car is moving backwards, run the motor forward for a small amount of time and then stop the motor altogether. And also note that I'm in the stop state. So if I call stop and I call stop again, then I'm not going to do anything with the motor. It'll basically just leave it in its stop state. So that's kind of the way the whole program works. It's pretty simple. Certainly your program could be much more sophisticated. One thing you need to be aware of when you build these kinds of programs is you don't want to create a big bang. In other words, I don't want to just type in all this code and then see if it works. I want to build little pieces at a time. So for example, you might start with the code that we built in the previous lab where we created just the move forward and move backward kinds of methods and we can call those and kind of get the car moving a little bit and see what happens. And then we can start to improve upon that a little bit at a time until we build up to something that does what we want to. And I wouldn't expect you to necessarily copy my code and, and put it in your car. In fact, it may not work. For example, this white threshold will vary depending on how far your sensor is from the floor. And so the timings, all kinds of things are going to be specific for your car. And so it'll require some creativity on your part to be able to figure out how this works. And in fact, you may want to build a car that does much more than just drive between two lines, or you might want to try and follow a line. I've got a friend that works in control systems, and he's talked to me a little bit about how you can actually monitor the light detector, and you can follow a single line, and you don't need two lines to do that. So something like that might be fun. Also, I haven't used servos in this at all. You could imagine using your servos as weapons in a battle with other cars, and that might be fun. And I haven't used the proximity sensor to make sure that I'm not running into walls. So all those things will make this program more sophisticated and more interesting. and It'll be much more of a challenge. Here's the video of the final finished car running our program. We see that the car tries to move forward until it hits a white line and then it backs up and tries left and then tries right as we saw in the program until it figures out which direction it can move further and then it heads in that direction. Working on this project has just been a blast. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've been able to follow along with the videos and build your own car and uh, try it out as well. I'd be very interested in seeing other applications that people have created using car like this and the kinds of things that you've been able to do with it. Please post links to your videos on this page or you can email them to me, email the links to me at sumpyguy at gmail.com. I look forward to seeing those. Once again, if you want to get a kit that has all the parts so that you can follow along with these videos and build your own autonomous vehicle, you can get that kit at swarmus.com. It's been a pleasure working on this autonomous vehicle and sharing these, these videos with you. I look forward to seeing your videos of your applications of these autonomous vehicles.